welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Thanks a lot for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. And if you like my videos, if you like the tips and advice, please subscribe to my YouTube channel today. All you have to do is click on my username, Catspit Productions, and go to my channel page and click the subscribe button. And you will get email notifications every time I upload a new video, which is pretty cool. So make sure you subscribe to support the continued production of free educational videos right here on YouTube. Subscribe today. All right, so listen, I wanted to do another shop tour. Now, we did a manual shop tour back when I was in the garage shop, when we had about 500 square foot of space or square feet of space okay so now we have the commercial space here which is a little bit bigger as far as the whole combined space so I have about maybe 1250 square feet or so it's a little bit under 1300 square feet and it's separated almost in half so the storefront I think has a little bit less than you know 600 and the print area where we are right now has you know it's got to have like at least 650 you know it's a little bit bigger in the print shop I think than it is in the front so it's almost a 50 50 split but I think there's a little bit more space in the back so we'll say that we have about 650 to 700 square feet in the Catspit commercial manual commercial print shop today okay so let's take a quick look at the storefront and then let's talk about what do I have in this 650, 700 square foot space? And you know, what is ideal for this type of space? What type of equipment do you need to have a you know, productive manual commercial screen printing shop? This is the front supply room where I keep most of the chemicals and supplies that you'll need for screen printing t-shirts and other textiles. So in the front showroom, or supply room, we've got quite a few things. Of course, screens, pallet tape, scoop coaters, pellons, chemical resistant bottles, inkjet film, squeegees, brackets and pallet boards, squeegee rolls, and I even have wood squeegee handles. Okay, that's the showroom. We're gonna go in there next. And uh, this is a pretty cool tile sign that one of our YouTube viewers made for us and I framed up. Here's a new little display piece we have for the storefront. That's not here for Halloween. That'll be here all the time. <laughs> of course, right? And then, of course, again, you know, a lot of supplies, a lot of screens, 20 by 24 manual screens. We've got your emulsion, chemicals, spot cleaning guns, block out, aerosol, spray tax, two different lines to choose from, environmental chemicals, drain safe chemicals. So this is the showroom where I have a lot of startup equipment along with some supplies and sample t-shirts to help you see what you can print, what can be done. Doing a little Google 360 here manually so hopefully it's smooth enough for you. And uh, heat press equipment, startup equipment, plastisol inks, all kinds of good stuff for you to check out. And, uh, you know, the showroom is pretty cool. It's fun to check out. So here's the uh, wood squeegee handle that I have. I normally keep those around, you know, for to sell with the rolls that I have. And uh, this is the showroom. And it's pretty full right now. I, I like to keep, you know, a lot of startup equipment here. So I got a couple of 20 by 24 exposure units. Have a complete line of Plastisol inks. Uh, bench top presses, aerosols are out here for display. We have those in the supply room. Um, you know, exposure units again. Here's a little, uh, uh, what do you call it, belt dryer, mini belt dryer. All of these items are available for display and demonstration, but you can also purchase them right here in the storefront and take them home today. So we have several one color, one station bench top presses, and of course, when you buy those, I throw in the stand. A lot of screens I have. Chemicals. That shelf there with the soddy stuff in the middle is like my expired discount stuff. So I always have something that could either be free, free, or it could be uh, really discounted. Okay, so this is the showroom. That's it. It's pretty cool. 
uh, it's the nicest place to discuss screen printing. It's air conditioned and I have a lot of material in here to show you and demonstrate and help figure out you know what you might need to do what you want to do with screen printing. Okay, so I'm trying to Google 360 the shop for you, sort of speak. With the exception of the lights in the middle, we'll have to uh, skip around those, but you'll get to see the shop close up as I take the camera held handheld. Today I'm going to show you, you know, basically the layout here and what I do where and why I have what and all that kind of jazz. Okay, so first off, let's close the door. <laughs> okay, and you know, one of the things you're going to need in your manual screen printing shop is an exposure unit. Okay, this is the one I have. It does 23 by 31 or 24, 20 by 24 rather, manual screens. Okay, so I have that in here. That's a necessary piece of equipment. And we'll talk about the fact that I use the entire shop space as a dark room. I did a video on that. And I will also include that video link in the description below. Okay, so you can see we have a heat press. Most screen printers have a heat press for doing names and numbers or this or that or the other thing. Even if we don't necessarily do heat transfers, normally we have a heat press for various things, okay? Um, this area is my kind of a staging area where I choose my squeegees and I have table space here with a computer and tools so that I can look at things online and I can, uh, you know, look at my shirts over here and, you know, kind of work with things here that may be relevant to the job, the work order or whatever, notes, anything like that. So you kind of need a little table space for that stuff. and. Uh, over here is just squeegees and pallets. There's some pallet accessories and uh, pocket pallets, uh, squeegee rests and stuff like that. And then, you know, it starts to get into the ink section. And basically, you know, this table, you see where that table and that table join. Well, technically, only this table right here is supposed to have my ink. You know, I've mentioned this before and, and right now it's like <laughs> it needs to be cleaned up. So. Um, I was doing a couple things here with customers and stuff, so I didn't get to clean up, but you'll, you'll notice that in my videos, my ink never leaves this area, okay, and there's the ink rack, all right, it never leaves this area unless it goes on the screen on press over here, okay, and sorry about the lighting, you know, it's going to be a little weird because we, we have to leave some lights on to give us some good lighting, but you know, it's going to affect. Okay, so, so that's kind of like, you know, what's immediately around the press. And this is a six color, six station elite. And then I have an 18 by 20 flash cure with heat control. Okay. And up here, again, more pallet accessories, scoop coaters, uh, hat attachment, you know, just stuff that I would need for the press. And these scoop coaters over here being stored, you know, over here because they're safer than over at the washout booth. Okay, so again, this area back here is about 650 to 700 square feet. Okay, here's the mic boom that I use. Okay, I have tall ceilings here. We've got like 16 foot ceilings, so I was able to put a pallet rack in the back. Okay, you can see that, and of course it's not really well organized yet. All right, but here's the um, drying box. Okay, so this is a light safe cabinet in which I have screens in there coated with emulsion ready to go. And, you know, I showed you in another video, if you notice, there's some red lights up there. There's video lights too, but that one that's off in the middle is a red light, and there's a few red lights and yellow lights around so that I can turn out all the lights and then just turn on the safe lights and open up this box. It's on casters. Sorry about the focus there. It's on casters and stuff, so it moves around. It rolls really easy, and uh, it's very convenient to work with. So I just open it up, and then, you know, it's right here. So I open it up. I pull my screen out, and there's the exposure unit, right? Do my exposure. 
and then I just come over here walk right over here and here's my screen making area with reclaim bench and brushes I like to use brushes instead of the spray bottles because I do 12 or 17 or whatever 17 screens at a time and using the squirt bottle you get your hand gets crippled <laughs> alright so here's the washout booth alright so so far you can see so for a manual screen printing shop we need an exposure unit we might need a heat press we need a, a, a printing press and that's the six color six station okay you're also going to need a, a place to make screens so you're going to need running water and also a drain and you can see I have a filtration system here which removes particles up to five micrometers in size or microns whatever you know <laughs> technically speaking um, so you know and then here's a place to store screens that are ready to get reclaimed because I can never get to them in time you know that's actually what this pile is this is a pile of student screens that that I you know keep making with students and then they have to be reclaimed and set up for the next class okay so again there it is you got your six color six station press we've got some working area storage area over there behind it heat press exposure unit I've got a drying cabinet okay over here at the washout booth we have to have a pressure washer and a garden hose okay so what you do you don't have to do anything fancy you can just use a splitter you see what I did there one goes to the pressure washer one goes to the garden hose very simple okay because you want the pressure washer to you know use when you're reclaiming screens but when you're washing out the stencil you use the garden hose okay so then over here we have you know every shop has to have a little tool area so I've stacked mine a little bit because you know I don't have a lot of tools I'm not a big tool guy because I can barely do anything I'm kind of tool retarded <laughs> you know I mean I can do some stuff but uh, you know theoretical physics is more my thing <laughs> okay so here's the exit out to the back we have a roll-up door here so this is a big roll-up door that I can get deliveries in and you'll see I, I put this pallet rack in but the pallet rack has five feet under it so I can take pallets five feet high which is normally they don't you know build them any higher than that and uh, you can see I just took a pallet in last week or actually this week it was and I'm still still breaking it down and getting the inks that's a bunch of plastic soil ink okay so I have a little bit of storage back here for myself there's some you know bull crap a couple of bikes that I have here I wish I could keep somewhere else but you know and of course I have uh, these days I have room for a spot cleaning station with the spot cleaning gun so that's very cool and it's right next to the belt dryer because you would often you know use this over here and then you're gonna walk over and drop the shirt on the belt and let it run through the belt again okay so here's the belt dryer you're gonna need a belt dryer if you want to do any kind of commercial screen printing because when you're printing for money you know time is money and in essence when you're printing for profit it's almost like printing money right so the more you can print per hour the more money you can make so a belt dryer becomes a critical component at a certain point when your the print job volumes get you know too high all right so this is a look from way back in the shop forward all right and you can see you know again this has got to be like 650 to 700 square feet maximum okay and we'll go over here I have another screen rack of course we have to have a ladder in the shop so there's another screen rack here for st screen storage this is just kind of a supply table with different stuff and and then we have more ink storage on the ink rack you saw that and down here is just I, I have some inks that have to be corded off actually that's what those are there for that's what I do over here even though technically this this table here <laughs> technically this table is supposed to be for t-shirts okay it's at the end of the belt dryer this is where you're supposed to flat fold the shirts 
Okay, but I don't really print commercially anymore because I'm doing the equipment and supplies now and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So um, I, I honestly use this table to cord off ink and then I have to uh, clean it really well because when I have students and stuff, we use it as the folding table and everything. So you can do that, you know, you can multi-use a table if, if you're very good about cleaning it up. All right, so here's, um, here's a shot forward again. All right, so I think you can see what you need, right? So basically the critical components are going to be the exposure unit, the printing press, the flash cure, the belt dryer, the washout booth, pressure washer, and a drying cabinet of some kind. Okay, and you know, of course you're going to have to have all your other accoutrements to go along, like squeegees and things like that. Okay, but I think this gives you a good idea of what consists of a manual commercial screen printing shop. All right, so here is a little aerial view so that you can kind of see the layout of the floor, you know, the footprints of everything. Okay, so there's the press. Takes up probably the most space. And then you got the dryer. You saw the exposure unit. And of course, over here, is all the um, screen making stuff against this wall. So this is kind of like a bird's eye view. We're up here pretty high above even the video lights. So, you know, but I wanted to give you this kind of floor plan view if I could. All right, so there it is. And uh, I'm going to try to take a picture for Instagram. That's why I have my tablet there. So we'll see if we can do that without breaking my neck. All right. All right, so that's it. That's kind of like the floor plan. Um, the lights in the way there, but you can see the back. There's the dryer. There's a rack over there. And then, of course, I got my pallet rack and stuff there. So actually you know I still have some room there's still a bit of room you know it's not like I'm cramped at all I have plenty of space here you know for working and stuff it's very comfortable okay so this is the bird's eye view from the rear or the opposite end of the shop so you can kind of see the floor plan a little bit you know I'm trying to help you figure out how to lay out your shop is what we're doing here, you know, giving you an idea of what is possible with, you know, this equipment in a manual screen printing shop and, um, you know, basically having a 6.6 six with all the accoutrements, you know, and basically this shop, you know, is pretty much the maximum that you would do for a manual screen printing shop, right? Before you really move up to automatic printing. Now, we do actually make eight color, eight station presses, manual presses, but really those are very specific. Like you have a specific reason for having an eight color, eight station manual. Otherwise, you know, at this point, you know, 6.6, six, once you outgrow this setup here, you'd probably be looking at, you know, an introductory level automatic. Okay, so there it is again. And um, the exposure unit, you can't see. It's way over there by the door. <clears throat> okay, but I wanted to just give you both views so you could see both ends of the shop and how the floor plan works and that kind of jazz. You see I have my catch basket right there and then the folding table right there. You know, spiff station or spot cleaning gun station. And there's a plug that's dangling into my shot from the fan I had to move. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Hope this gives you, you know, kind of a good idea of how I have things laid out here. As you can see, when you combine the darkroom space with the print shop space and you use a light safe drying cabinet to store your screens, you can actually fit quite a bit of shop 
into a 500 square foot space, 650 square foot, 700 square feet. You can actually do a lot with that space. Okay, so, um, you know, I think this is a good example. My shop is a good example of how small you can go. And if you want to see the video tour of the 500 square foot space, then check the video description. I'll put the link in for that. And we basically had everything that we have here, you know, minus the big pallet rack, of course. But basically, I had pretty much everything I have here now in this space. I did have in the 500 square foot garage shop, except that I had the Vista instead of the Elite because the Elite has a little bit bigger footprint than the Vista press. So the 6.6 Elite is a little bit bigger than the 6.6 Vista. So that's the only difference in between the two spaces and the two manual screen printing shops. Okay, so I hope that helped you out today. I hope this was uh, a neat video for you to watch and get a little bit of information about how you might set up your manual commercial screen printing shop in some smaller spaces. All right, please remember if you like what you see, rate, thumbs up, comment below when you can, and most importantly, please subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching today, and we'll see you next time.